Glenn Miller is running for U.S. Senator from the state of Missouri, and he's been making headlines with his It's the Jews Stupid campaign, for lack of a better term. Here's one of those ads which stations have been running with a disclaimer you just don't usually see with political ads. The following is a paid political advertisement and may not be suitable for children, but this station is required to carry it by federal law. White men have become the biggest cowards ever to walk the earth. The world has never witnessed such yellow cowards. We've sat back and allowed the Jews to take over our government, our banks, and our media. We've allowed tens of millions of foreign mud people to invade our country, steal our jobs and our women, and destroy our children's future. America is no longer ours. America belongs to the Jews who rule it and to the mud people who multiply in it. The undeniable proof is at DavidDuke.com. It's time for white men to unite, to join together, and to take our country back. This is Glenn Miller, and I approve this message. And Glenn Miller joins us now. How old a guy are you, Glenn? I'm 69. All right. And what do you, who do you find to be more of a problem, blacks or Jews? I can't tell. Compared to our Jewish problem, all other problems are mere distractions. Okay, that's what I thought. Um, and then let me ask you this also, because with a lot of the anti-Jew, anti-black folks, they also don't like homosexuals. Are, are, do you also dislike homosexuals, or are you gay-friendly? Uh, I'm, I'm definitely not gay-friendly. Okay. Uh, if, you, if you envision and think just what it is homosexuals do, right. if it doesn't make you sick, then you're just as sick as they are. Hmm. I guess I'm sick. Uh, how how old were you? How old were you when you first figured out that Jews controlled so many things? Uh, well, I really became uh, Jew wise in 1974. Okay, uh, is when I started reading some independent publications published uh, published by white nationalist leaders around the country, Doctor David uh, or Doctor William Pierce, uh, the good Dr. doctor, David Duke, right. And Wilmot Robertson. And what exactly do Jews control? Jews control the mass media in this country. They control the United States federal government. And they, they control the Federal Reserve Bank. In what way? In what way do they control those things? <laughs> well, uh, as far as the mass media is concerned, they own outright a great deal of it. But they control, uh, they control it mainly through political correctness. Uh, everybody's afraid to step over the line called political correctness. And the Jewish media has established what that line is. And where is that line? <clears throat> well, you don't, you don't uh, criticize the Jews for one thing. You know, the United States government has taken on the task, and it's the responsibility of the federal government now, to combat criticism of Jews in every country on earth. Wow. To include the monitoring of their books, their newspapers, their magazines, uh, their television, radio, even their music. Yeah, and I'll tell you, you know, some, it's called the uh, 2004 Global Anti-Semitism Act. Yeah, no, I mean, but, uh, that, the yeah. government doesn't do that for blacks or Hispanics or Asian or American Indians. Well, there's a number or of other white people the, or Christians or Muslims. They only do it for the Jews. Well, but at the same time, the, the government doesn't uh, provide the, the legal situation that uh, Native Americans have at reservations for anybody else. You know, we could pick out all the advantages different groups get, right? But my question to you is this. No, no, no. How no, can no. I... You, you're going off in the left field somewhere. No, I, I don't think I'm so. I'm saying that the federal government yeah. has taken on the responsibility to combat criticism of Jews worldwide. And, and that's a problem and those for you. countries that violate that will be punished through sanctions or whatever. And you would like to see more criticism of I Jews. I mean, that is, what I'm pointing out to you is that yeah, that is more point? evidence that Jews control the federal government. Now, how ca I'm Jewish, and I know that, by the way, I'm telling my producer here, because he's not up to speed on this, after Glenn... Well, you know then. You hold know. on a second. Hold on a second, Glenn. Um, after we confirmed our interview with Glenn, uh, Glenn posted on a white supremacist forum that he'd be on the show, and then other people on the forum started researching me and a few of them found articles that pointed to me having ancestors in Eastern Europe, and they said, yep, this guy is a Jew. And, and so my question to you is, how can I get in on this power? I'm Jewish. I feel completely powerless. Who can I talk to? Where can I go? Where are the meetings? I would love to get in on that power myself. Well, you're born, you're born with the, uh, the, all the big Jews discriminate 
in favor of other Jews. That's why there's so many Jews in the mass media, for example. But why am I powerless? Why, why there's so many Jews uh, in the federal government? But I'm powerless. Where can I? You're where are they meeting? You're not powerless. You're not powerless. You got your own damn radio show. You own seventy radio stations. You call that powerless? Believe me, I have no power. Yeah, right. That's what that's what Howard Stern said, and he's a, a Jew liar just like you are. Well, I'm not lying. I'm just telling you, I don't know where the meetings are. Well, you're are. insulting the intelligence of your listeners when you say you have no power, but yet you speak on 70 radio stations. Yeah, but a lot of those stations are really small. You still have power. Okay, let's but, talk uh, about you know, uh, Glenn. Patrick Buchanan, you're familiar with Patrick Buchanan. Of, how could I not be? He, he refers to the United States Congress as Israel's amen corner. And to capital let, let me, let me stop you right Israeli there. Let occupied me, territory. Patrick Glenn. Buchanan, he's a great man, he's a great historian. He's one of the very few journalists that has the courage to speak out against Jewish domination of the country. Let's, let's not talk about, I want to focus on your history, because again, you are running for Senate in Missouri. You believe that you have a chance to win? Oh yes, absolutely. There's, there's a lot of changes that have occurred in the last few years that Make it possible for a radical politician like me to win elections. Tell people, us, there are a lot tell of us, let's go. White people out there, let me tell you. Well, no, let's go through it. Let's let's talk about your arrest in 1987. Was that a felony? Oh, you you going to attack me personally? No, no, now. no, 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 no. You can't debate the facts with me, so you're gonna. I that's just very kike like. I Glenn, hold on. Let's calm down. I what I want to do is just set your background because we need to know the background. Yeah, was we, that we, we. <laughs> was that a felony or a misdemeanor? Oh, felony. It was a felony. So, I'm a convicted felon, and I'm proud of it, by the way. How many U.S. senators now are convicted felons? I couldn't care less. Uh, I wish there were more of them were, because then it would show that they had some guts at one time in their life. Well, most of them get convicted as felons after their time in, the, in Congress, is what I've noticed. Usually they don't go in as convicted felons, but many come out that way, right? Well, if I had my way, they'd all be in jail right now for treason, if not hung from a sturdy oak tree. Were Jews... Were Jews, Jews uh... dominate own... Virtually every one of them. Ron Paul is the only independent politician representative in, in Washington. Were Jews responsible for your arrest? Uh, no, I don't think so. Okay, good. Let's, uh, uh, that's good, at least. They were responsible for my conviction that prompted me to go underground and declare war on the son of bitches. So Jews convicted you? Yes. Okay. But who committed... Morris Dees, mainly, he's a G. That, but who committed... Uh, runs the Southern Poverty Law Center. I'm sure you're familiar with him. And who committed the crime, though? Which specific crime are you referring? The one you were convicted of. Well, I, I committed that, sure. Okay, just, no, just making sure we're straight. Convicted of declaring war on the federal government and possession of illegal weapons. So, given the overwhelming Jewish control of the media, how can you explain the incredible success of Pat Robertson's 700 Club and the Christian Broadcasting Network? Wouldn't Jews who control the media just I'm glad pull you Pat asked right that off? question. Good. Pat McCann is the biggest Israeli bootlicker on the planet, one of the biggest ones. The way he maintains his empire. Pat Buchanan, money, you mean Pat well, Robertson? You mean Pat Robertson? Let me finish Robertson. answering your question. You, well, the you, way, you, the you, way you. he keeps all that is to kiss up and promote wars for Israel. He's a warmonger, a neocon, and he advocates for the nuclear annihilation of millions of black and brown people in the Middle East. John Hague is another one. He's even more fervent. But hold on a second. Israel, Mike. Israel gave John Hagee a brand new jet okay, as a Glenn. reward for his promotion. I'm trying to get of out of the wars. weeds. Let's not get into the weeds here. Hold on a second. Well, you asked me a question, I answered it. My question, though, is wouldn't Jews just pull Christian programming off the air if they had all that power? No, not at all. They would. Are you kidding? No, I'm serious. Uh, Christians in the United States, particularly Southern Christians, are the biggest proponents of wars in the Middle East among all the demographic demographic groups in the country. Okay. Uh, they believe Jews are God's chosen people, and they have to support Jew wars and protect Israel at all costs, even at the cost of nuclear annihilation of the world. Let me remind... That is their mindset right now. Let me remind our audience... Of Christians. Let me remind our audience, we're speaking with Glenn Miller, who is running for U.S. Senator in the state of Missouri. Um... I, do you personally dislike me? So, like, could we get along even though I'm Jewish and you hate Jews? Like, do you have anything personal against me, or how does that work? Yes. I, I, I hate all Jews. Okay. And I'll tell you why. 
for, for me to say out of the one corner of my mouth that I didn't hate all Jews, and then out of the other corner of my mouth say that Jews caused the deliberate murders of over 300 million of my, of my people during the 20th <laughs> century alone. Right. Okay. Of course I hate you. But what have what, what my hate? What have I done personally? I hate all Jews. Okay. How, what have I done personally to you, though? It doesn't matter. Okay, uh, so it's just a general hatred. I gotcha. Yeah, well, they're like the general hatred against the Germans. Mm. You know, Germans are blamed collectively because of the alleged so-called Holocaust. Right. Which didn't, uh, did, all, did the all Holocaust right happen? people are blamed collectively for slavery in America and the the taking of land from American Indians. All white people are blamed for that. Would we but, be better you, off? You tell me yeah. I shouldn't blame all Jews for deliberately killing 300 million of my people during the 20th century, <laughs> which is easily proven. Uh, what, what you, a, you see your double standards. <laughs> double standards or that something. That means you're biased in favor of your own people, and I don't fault you for that. Why hasn't there been a Jewish president? It would be too obvious, wouldn't it? It would be. That's too, it's too it far. It would be you, a little too obvious. That would, uh, uh, <coughs> yeah, make would the jig come up. Okay, all right, fair enough. And what do you think of the teabaggers? Do you like that third party? I'm still uh, school's still out on them. I'm still studying that they're a new movement. Yeah, I'm watching them closely. Uh, I suspect, however, they'll be infiltrated by the Jews and mm-hmm. therefore led into defeat. Hmm. Uh, do you think the U.S. would be better off today if Hitler had succeeded? Oh, absolutely. The whole world would. Wow. Not, not only white people, but the entire Gentile population of the world. Wow. Look at all the wars. Look at all the hundreds of millions of people that have died during, uh, uh, during and after World War II. Hitler would have prevented all that. Hitler, Hitler would have created a paradise on Earth, wow. particularly for white people, but he would have been, a, he would have been fair to other people as well if you read his it's book. It's sad I wouldn't have been around, around to see it. Uh, what about other minorities? I mean, the, if, the if truth you... of the matter is, Hitler was a great man. He was, he's the most lied about man in history, and the, and the Germans were, <laughs> were the most humane combatants of World War II. Of course. Truth, truth be known. There was no one who treated the Jews better than the Germans during World War II. Well, Jews weren't the only people who suffered in World War II. There was a dozen, hundreds of ethnic groups who suffered in World War II. All you're concerned about is Jews, and I understand why, because you're a Jew. I'm concerned about everybody. What about going back to slavery in the U.S.? Would, would it be good if blacks and Hispanics were still enslaved in the U.S.? Oh, absolutely not. I don't, I don't, I don't favor slavery. You know, there are, uh, there are ten times more slaves in Africa as we speak than at the height of American uh, slavery in 1861. So you don't want uh, slavery. Blacks should, be, blacks should be concerned about the present slavery in Africa, where there's 39 million, according to Amnesty International, rather than harping on something that happened 160-something years ago. Who's the greatest black man, in your opinion? Louis Farrakhan, by far. Right, and what about... I have a great deal of admiration, not only for Louis Farrakhan, <laughs> course, but yeah. all black Muslims and Muslims uh, in the Middle East, uh, the president of, of Iran. And how... Ahmadinejad is a great man. But he's not black, is he? Uh, no, he's, he's a dark-skinned fellow, but he has guts, and he tells the truth about the Jews. He held a conference, you, I'm sure you're familiar with, yeah. to investigate the Holocaust. If a Jew accepts Jesus, are they okay in your book? Jews for Jesus. You could probably count them on one hand. Uh, <laughs> and even and they're lying. So, did, are, are, you, did you know it's a criminal offense in Israel for Christians to give Jews a gift of a Bible or to preach Christianity to, to Jews in Israel? Uh, tell, it's a five-year yeah. prison sentence, potentially. Right. Um, right. You don't, you don't deny that, do you? We're just. I want to focus on the Senate candidacy of Glenn Miller. What would be, uh, if you were elected, what would be your first act as senator? My first act, and I've proclaimed this uh, in a recent platform publication I just published, yeah. and that is I'm going to meet with black, Asian, Hispanic, American Indians, and white leaders, and civil rights leaders, and representatives, and sit down and have a talk with them and tell them point blank, all I want is to free white people from Jewish bondage <laughs> and to save the white race from extinction. <laughs> and, and I will work yeah. with you people in any way I can. I'll give you anything if you will help me achieve that. We, and you, and we, I'll tell you, 
other the other Gentiles, black, Hispanic, Asian, they don't like being ruled by Jews any more than we do. Hey, you're and, telling and me. And we're going to form a coalition of Gentiles yeah. to more uh, evenly distribute the power in this country. I think each each group ought to have at least one major TV network, for example. Okay, I don't last, think Jews should, should control all of them. My last question for you, and this is just a, I, I want. I hope you'll indulge me. This is a game we play sometimes with people. The name of the game is Elect, Deport, Waterboard. I'm going to give you three names of people. You've got to put one in each category. Who do you elect? Who do you deport? Who do you waterboard? And, the, and those people are Barack Obama, Alan, uh, Alan Greenspan. He's a Jew. Hold, hold on a second. Barack Obama, Alan Greenspan, and Joe Biden. Elect. I like Obama more than the other two by far. So elect, deport, waterboard. Elect Obama. Elect Obama, okay. Yeah, de de uh, deport Greenspan. Okay. And waterboard Biden. Well, you've said it all. Glenn Miller is a candidate for Missouri, U.S. Senator for Missouri. Hey, He's I'm just starting to have fun. You're going to quit on me now? We just, we're, we're just out of time. And, you know, I'm, I'm disappointed that you hate me because it, it's, I was looking so forward to being friends. I and don't believe you've had you've got the guts to broadcast this interview. You're going to trash can it. There's no chance, my friend Glenn. We will I'll, broadcast this. I'd be you know willing it. to bet money you do. Let's put a little money on it. Let's bet. Well, I don't have it. <laughs> All right. And I certainly hope nobody's contributing to that campaign of yours, I'll tell you. Thank All you, right. Glenn Miller, for coming on. We'll uh, talk soon, maybe, if you get elected.